Thanks for continuing on with us. My name is Ibrahim Sani, taking over from my colleague Haritz Ashraf Hasnan. The leader of Thailand's opposition party, Move Forward, has said that he is ready to be Prime Minister as an and is in talks with other opposition leaders about forming coalition after voters on Sunday delivered a rebuke to the country's military rulers. Uh, and we need to understand a little bit more in terms of how the development in Thailand is going to happen in the next coming days and weeks. Simultaneously, Thailand's economy grows 2.7% in the first quarter and Thailand's GDP for the first quarter grew 2.7%, beating expectations of a 2.3% rise. On a seasonally adjusted quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, Thailand's economy grew 1.9% in the first quarter of the year. And the economy was driven by the quote-unquote robust growth of export and services, private consumption along with the continual expansion of both private and public investment. And its Economic and Social Development Council has said further that the export of goods and government expenditure meanwhile fell. So there's a lot that is happening currently in Thailand right now, not just on the market development but of course the economy as well. And politics. Uh, joining us is Chuck Reung Sinpinya, the Head of Research at Maybank Securities Thailand, joining us from Bangkok. Uh, Chuck, let's do uh, markets outlook right now, or markets review. Uh, reaction on the markets so far, is it overdone or is it to be expected right now? It, it is somewhat to be expected. Um, I think given political uncertainty, um, I think foreign investors in particular have been quite reluctant uh, to put their money in. And in fact, you know, over the past many days, we've seen pretty big outflows um, that could continue, I think, for the next one to two months. Um, having said that, we are quite positive on the market, you know, on a three to six month view. I, I think, the, as you mentioned, the GDP growth, which uh, exceeded our consensus expectation, um, will, 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 will continue to accelerate uh, in, in the second quarter and potentially in the second half. Uh, uh, so I think that's a powerful tailwind. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to focus a little bit more on the expectation of the SET right now because uh, yeah. based on what we saw so far, it is quite interesting uh, on how the week has uh, uh, taken place. Um, we're looking at uh, the market actually going up uh, for uh, a lot of uh, sectors, um, including that of uh, the SEC briefly gained more than 0.3% at the open on Monday, for instance, uh, before pairing gains. Uh, we've seen shares of energy supplier, Gulf Energy Development and convenience store operator CP all led losses in Thailand and power supplies exporter Delta Electronics Thailand and airports management company Airports of Thailand led gains. So it's like a mix and match of some sectors doing well, some sectors uh, doing uh, uh, reacting uh, mm. negatively. How do we make sense of which sectors are actually benefiting from the current environment right now in Thailand? Well, I think the, the sell-off that you've seen in some of the power companies, I think that was the market um, expectation that the new um, move forward led government could tackle, um, you know, the, the, the electricity bills and that would put pressure uh, on, on the margins for these companies. Um, potentially, there are also some concerns on um, on breaking up of uh, you know the so-called demonopolization, you know certain companies are very dominant in the industries. So I think that's part of the market concern. Um, personally, I think it's uh, the sell-off for some of these names were a little bit overdone in a sense that I do not think that the new government will want to, you know, enact all these um, unfriendly economic uh, policies uh, right away, if if at all. You know, keep in mind that it's going to be a coalition government. So anything that move forward party uh, proposals will need to be, um, you know, uh, countered by, for example, Puertai's policies. And I think Puertai is seen as one of the more economic friendly parties. So, so I think, you know, it will be a measured approach. Um, also, I would expect the, the focus initially for the new government will be more on um, political and social um, policies uh, that they have made, that they have promised uh, to the voters before the election. Um, so, again, some of the sell down has, has been overdone, in my opinion. Uh, the uh, third uh, in uh, line to, uh, in the election uh, did say that they won't uh, participate um, if there are laws uh, resulting in the amendment of uh, lesser majestic laws. Um, this is uh, going to be a tough one because um, uh, we've seen how uh, the winner of the elections actually said that that would be part of the main agenda. We're, we're talking about amendment, not, not abolishing. Do you feel that these kind of uh, conversations is actually uh, a positive or a negative to investors uh, from the market? Well, I think any uncertainty is, is not positive. Um, you know, having said that, there's still a lot to be done before the government uh, can form, you know, not just the, um, the Section 1112, uh, but other issues as well, uh, potentially. So, 
it, it's still early days, um, but you know this could drag on for perhaps another two months. Um, so the election commission doesn't have to certify the votes until two months from now, and beyond that, you could have another month or so uh, before the government gets formed. And of course, uh, within these next two months, do you feel that there could be some uh, uh, profit-taking moments from investors because uh, of the uncertainty of the government uh, formation right now? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, we, 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 we expect volatility, um, as in when there are positive developments, you could have a knee-jerk reaction up, and, and the opposite could be true, right? When we, when we see some negative development, it could be quite uh, volatile, yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Thai baht very shortly, but for now, uh, what would be the year-end SET index outlook uh, based on Maybank's house views? Well, we, we, we are positive longer term, as I said, right? on a six-month view. Um, we, are, we are comfortable um, with the market going to you know, 1,700, um, maybe slightly higher. Um, I think that is supported by acceleration in GDP growth. Um, I think corporate profit, uh, will you, know, you will not see... Um, any significant downward revision to earnings anymore, uh, in my opinion. And the results so far in the first quarter, we have seen some, you know, big positive surprises from from big sectors like banks or uh, or energy. Uh, and and so heading forward, I think market um, uh, can perform, you know, be beyond this uh, period of volatility. Um, over the next one to two months. So the Thai baht has hovered at strongest levels since February earlier this year when it was trading below the 3.3.5 threshold. Uh, the Thai baht saw its recent weakest point in October last year as the US Fed continued on tightening its uh, cycle. Uh, and of course, uh, the weakest the Thai currency had been since August 2006. Um, and we're looking at how the uh, baht rallied slightly uh, earlier this week. Uh, do you feel that that uh, rally might might continue or might persist uh, moving forward uh, while we wait for the new formation of the new government? Yeah, I think Thai baht uh, will continue to strengthen. Um, our economy's view is that it will go to you know 32.3. Um, and that is supported mainly by um, the large uh, current account surplus that we, we are starting to see. Um, you know, pre-COVID, Thailand reported very big current account surplus uh, now uh, we're, we're, we're returning, you know, because of the tourist receipt, because of the lower energy import bills that will continue to support uh, Thai Baht to strengthen them. Uh, speaking of which, uh, could you share with us a little bit more about the tourism outlook for Thailand as we all know that Thai economy is heavily reliant on tourism? Mm. Yeah, so for the full year, we're forecasting 27 million uh, tourist arrivals. Uh, last year, we had 11. In the first quarter alone, we had 8.5. Um, now we're heading into um, you know, a seasonal low, so you could see a dip in uh, mon monthly tourist arrival, uh, but we expect uh, the figures to pick up you know, in, into the summer months, uh, meaning July and August. I think based on past surveys, that is when um, a lot of the Chinese tourists uh, plan to come to Thailand. And obviously, as we head into the fourth quarter, um, you know, even starting from October, um, we, we could see tourist number continue to rise again. So we're, we're, we're still quite comfortable with our forecast of 27 million. Uh, and of course, uh, the political scenario in Thailand doesn't necessarily impact tourism, uh, at least mm. in my thesis. Uh, uh, say, for instance, uh, COVID-19 or, or epidemic would impact tourism. Uh, am, am I right in this kind of assessment that the political ongoings might not necessarily impact tourism at all, at least for Thailand? Right, I think that would be our base case. Right? Um, we don't expect any you know, unrest or street protests uh, at, at this point. So unless and until anything extreme happens, um, I, I do not think any political development will impact uh, tourist uh, arrival at all. Okay. Uh, towards the end of this conversation, uh, Chuck, let's talk a little bit more about some of the key drivers in Thailand in view of the weak global economic outlook. Uh, what would be some of the key areas of concerns and key opportunities that you think will drive the economy uh, despite the global economic outlook that we have right now? Well, obviously, you know, slow slowdown in global economy will impact the export um, and potentially a little bit on tourists. Uh, having said that, I think Thailand is much more exposed to um, you know, ASEAN or China in general than, than we are to the US or Europe. So the slowdown in developed market might not impact Thailand as much. Uh, and that's why we forecast GDP growth to accelerate this year to 4% on um, year on year compared to 2.6% uh, last year. Um, even though global economy as a whole is, is decelerating.
Uh, top stock picks, uh, Chuck, and perhaps some of the reasoning on why uh, these are the stocks that you're looking at. Yeah, we like consumption names. Uh, CPR uh, is a broad-based consumption play, uh, big cap. Um, we also like uh, discretionary uh, spending plays like Com7, which is an electronic store that continues to gain market share. We like Home Pro, which is a home improvement store, again, from a discretionary spending uh, angle post-election. Um, in tourism, we like Mint, um, hotel operator. Um, I think they are... Um, you know, a little bit unique in a sense they have European exposure and, and that it uh, continues to pick up into the Euro Europe's uh, high season in the summer.